Hi booktube, I am Stephanie at Steph Loves and Pages and today I am here, we're doing a follow up video for The Crooked Shelf because I made a couple errors and that amazing bookstore and the cutest little town ever deserves correct information in their video. So follow up it is. So not only am I going to make a, those corrections, I'm going to post some more footage from the bookstore, but also Pam did film her own book hauls for you. So exciting. Okay, so first things first, The Crooked Shelf is in Mifflin County, not Juniata County. Now they are close to each other, so it's just a little bit of a blunder on my end, but I blame this. Well, also I blame that I have people I know in Juniata County and then this, I didn't even read this. It says Juniata, so I was just like, Juniata! But it is Lewistown in Mifflin County, The Crooked Shelf. Another mistake I made was I continued to call it The Crooked Bookshelf. I hear shelf, I wanna slap a book on it. Shelf, book, bookshelf, bookstore. But it is The Crooked Shelf. And the, like how annoying, I was standing in front of the store and I said The Crooked Bookshelf. I was holding a bookmark that said the name and I still said Crooked Bookshelf. Stephanie. It is The Crooked Shelf, and like I said in the previous video, the inspo behind that was the book Shiver, the Wolves of Mercy Falls series. Again, a young adult series. I read the first book, add it to your TBR. It's good. You would think as someone who literally reads so many fantasy books that have maps in the front of the book, I would be a little better with like geography of the state that I've lived in my whole life, but that's not the case. I can tell you where all the courts are located in Perinthian, I can tell you the layout of Zodiac Academy, but I can't tell you where the counties in Pennsylvania are. Whoops. I'm a fantasy reader. I don't live in the real world. I live in books, okay? So I am sorry about that. It is Mifflin County, not Juniata County. Oh, look what I just opened it up to. This map in this book. See, I wasn't too far off. Juniata and Mifflin County right here. There's a little map of Lewistown where the bookstore is. Seriously so cute. If you read Shiver, Lewistown and the location of the bookstore would do that um, book justice. It's small towny, it's quaint, it's cute, it's very easy to walk around. I just really loved it there. It was a, it's a great location for a bookstore. So something you might have noticed in the videos were these geese. So Lewistown has a goose day and here's a little pamphlet. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. This year it's on September 29th and honestly I think we're gonna go. <laughs> um, I think it sounds so cute. Small towns really do have the cutest little functions. It gives me like Stars Hollow Gilmore Girl vibes. I love that. I, every time I watch Gilmore Girls I always wished like I could live in such a small town and Lewistown definitely gives me those small town star ho stars hollow vibes. And if you're a Gilmore Girl fan like me, you know how throughout Gilmore Girls, stars hollow has all these cute quaint town functions. Like Goose Day would totally be in Gilmore Girls, like seriously. So I just wanna read you a little bit about Goose Day. And if you're in the area, I would love to see you there because like I said, I'm pretty sure we're gonna go because how cute. I, w I just can't wait to be a part of this. Can I go? Am I, are we allowed? Or is it a town thing? Can I, can we crash Goose Day? If we're not from Lewistown? This is super cute. It is like, ah. So cute. So if you might have noticed that there were geese throughout the video, um, there is one in the bookstore, which I guess they put outside then, I think she said. And there was a couple we saw while driving into Lewistown. It says why we celebrate this tradition has been observed in the Juniata River Valley for more than two centuries, carried here by an early local settler. Legend has it that if you eat goose on St. Michaelmas Day, or locally called Goose Day, you will never want for money all year round. Believers of this tradition adhere to it faithfully and eat goose every September 29th, thus ensuring wealth and prosperity for the coming year. In the 1970s, both the Mifflin and Juniata County Commissioners issued former proclamations establishing Goose Day as official county holidays. Like, <laughs> tell me 
this place isn't Stars Hollow in the flesh. Tell me. A community-wide public art project led by Community Partnerships features fiberglass geese painted and designed by local artists and sponsored by local businesses. For a list of the geese landings, scan the QR code at the right of the wild geese tracker. I don't know how I can post that for you. That would be fun. Yeah, I don't know how to post the QR code for you, but it says for more information about the wide variety of activities, events, and promotions held throughout the Juniata River Valley for Goose Day and year round, go to www.jrvvisitors.com. So if you want to know more about Goose Day and get some more information on this cute little town and that area in general, I guess, Go to that website. It says the official Goose Day list is released on September 1st. So this is so cute. September 29th, Goose Dinners, events, activities, art, music, workshops, contests, giveaway, and much more. Lewistown, Mifflin Town, Belleville, and Port Royal, Pennsylvania. Some facts about Goose Day. In recent years, Juniata River Valley chefs have taken a creative approach in using goose in a variety of dishes like goose stew, goose pizza, what? <laughs> also, thanks to some grassroots efforts, many Goose Day events are held annually and celebrate, to celebrate the holiday. <gasps> Do you see this picture up here? It's a friend's spoof. Listen, oh, this was in 2021. Listen, I'm telling you right now, I hope they have, I'm, I doubt they do the same thing every year, but if they have this photo op, <gasps> I'm gonna scream! Me and Hugsy, we're going to Goose Day. <laughs> I also have this little pamphlet, which has the geese. It says, follow the flock. Um, you can follow community partnerships on Facebook and Instagram, um, or check out www.cp cpartnerships.com for a map and more photos. So here's all the geese. There's some in Burnham, Lewistown, uh, McVeigh Town, Mifflin Town, Reedsville. So fun, that is so fun. This area would be such a great place if you're looking for a quaint vacation in Pennsylvania. It would be so cute and so fun seems very family friendly. So, and when I made my first video and did our first visit, I didn't even know the bookstore owner's name. Her name is Kelly and she's so sweet. Her daughter's name is Lily. She was there. You can see her in the videos. Kelly doesn't realize this yet, but she is one of my new best friends. She's so kind and she's so sweet. And she was just so kind to me, even though I made so many mistakes. And like, thanks girl. We're doing this follow-up video to do the corrections, but also, we're still so new to these videos. Like this was our second one ever. So we'll probably go back next year as we continue to learn and figure out what we're doing on this channel and do a follow up one there. And I'm so excited to return. But like I said, I also think we're going to Goose Day. I've never had goose. I've never ate goose. So it'll be interesting. That's also a very like fantasy romance novel meal type goose stew. Okay, so thank you for watching this again. I really needed to make the corrections again because the bookstore, the crooked shelf, and the town itself, they deserve to have correct information in their video. So here's another montage of that amazing store and the cutest little town. And then stay tuned to the end for Pam's book haul, which is bigger than mine. <laughs>
So my dog's getting a drink now. This is like the third time I've tried filming and she's like, you know what? I'm a little parched. Okay. My name is Pam. I am friends with Steph and I am usually the person that tags along with her on her bookstore reviews and I usually buy way more than her because I have no self-control. So since um, on our last bookstore uh, we visited uh, the Crooked Shelf, I bought way more than she did. Uh, we talked about it and we decided that I would also do a quick uh, haul for you so that you can see what else uh, the Crooked Shelf has to offer uh, because they didn't just have, it wasn't just a bookstore. It felt like the Scholastic Book Fair for adults. Um, there were puzzles, games, like just all kinds of different cool things that you could pick up. Um, and I thought it was nice because it was like the, the items that they had, they weren't just basic things that you could buy anywhere. I didn't think that anything that I saw there looked like something that you would stumble upon at like Walmart or Target. They were, they were just different and, you know, kind of like niche things. And it's just a great place to grab gifts for your favorite book lover or a puzzle lover or whatever. So, um, because it was my version of the Scholastic Book Fair, I bought books and additional things. Um, Again, they had a ton of stuff, ton of different options. So I'm going to get started with the things that were not book related, and then I'll just jump into the books. So the first thing that I grabbed was this really cute little pill sorter um, so that you can like organize your medicine each day because I am terrible at remembering to take my medicine. So I thought that this was nice and it's cuter than the ones at like those big plastic ones at the pharmacy. And the front says, I have decided to be happy because it's good for my health. Anyway, so the next thing that I grabbed was the Bald Eagle Pennsylvania State Forest Lizard Map. And I just grabbed this because I am a big hiker and I thought this would be really nice for a quick day trip. And I will say the Crooked Shelf also had a lot of things that were um, targeted towards, towards the community that they're in. I mean, even local authors, uh, different things that you could do. So it was really neat uh, to go into a kind of a small town bookstore and just kind of see that personalized touch of the actual community. The next thing I got is a game. It's called the Donner Dinner Party. And it says it is a rowdy game of frontier cannibalism. And I like anything morbid or weird. So Steph actually picked this up and I was like, yeah, hand it over. So I have no self-control. Um, I also grabbed two gifts from my mom uh, because they're just things that I thought she would enjoy. This first one is spiroglyphic animals. So it is, it just looks like this. It's just a circle. And when you color it in, you can see what animals inside of it. It's just something that I figured she would like to do. I also found a 1000 dot to dot animal. I don't know what you would call this, like a puzzle or I guess it's not a puzzle, just dot to dot animals. So it's just one of these things from our youth or my youth at least. Um, but it's kind of cool that they're marketing them to adults now. I don't know if they did before. So that is the haul of the non-book related things that I grabbed. Um, I will quickly jump into the books that I picked up while I was there. Um, so the first book that I picked up was Shiver. And the reason that I got this is because the Crooked Shelf is named after this. So I just wanted to pick it up because if a store, if a, if a bookstore owner named a name their store after a book. I just want to read it like regardless. So I actually have started. I'm about 100 pages in and it's really good so far. So, so far I would recommend it. The next book that I picked up was The Sanatorium. Um, I grabbed this because it said it's The Shining, but with a full house. And again, I like anything morbid or spooky. So I just thought that would be a good, good read. The next book is The House in the Cerulean Sea, which I see everywhere. Um, people are raving about it. So when I stumbled upon it, I figured that I would pick it up. My dog is about to bark. I also picked up One by One by Ruth Ware. Um, I have only read one of her books so far, The Woman in Cabin 10, and I really enjoyed it. So hopefully this is equally as interesting to me. 
I grabbed this more because it was on sale and I have a problem and if there's a book on sale I'm gonna buy it. Actually if there's a book I'm probably gonna buy it. The last book is the book that I'm the most excited about. This is the graphic adaptation of Anne Frank's Diary and right now um, I know Anne Frank Anne Frank's Diary has um, been discussed a lot lately because it for some reason is ending up on a banned book list somewhere which is wild. Um, so when I saw this, I was like, wow, I absolutely need to pick this up um, because number one, I've never seen anything like this with Anne Frank's diary. Um, you can just see here, it's like set up like a, um, like a comic book and the art just looked really, really nice. Um, and I just thought it was kind of an important read and it's something good that I can give to my nephew after I'm finished with it. Um, so that he can enjoy it as well. So overall, that is everything that I got. Um, I would highly recommend visiting the Crooked Shelf bookstore. It was very cute, had a great, uh, great selection. It wasn't overwhelming at all. I think sometimes I go into, if I go into the bigger, um, bigger stores, and when I say bigger stores, I'm talking like chains. Um, I don't wanna like bash any chains but like I'm trying to, I'm actively trying to support independent bookstores more. And um, <clears throat> I think the nice thing about the Crooked Shelf was that it was not overwhelming when you walked in. There was a great selection. It was very well organized. Um, there was something for everyone, but it wasn't this overwhelming experience where you walk in and you can't figure out what you wanna look at, or there's such a wide selection that you're just looking in one small area because there's just too much to, um, to pick through. So again, if you are in the area, I would definitely recommend uh, visiting the Crooked Shelf Bookstore. That's all I got. Steph, bye. Every time I rewatch this, I'm like, man, double chin city, bro. So I'm trying to um, adjust the height of my phone so that I am less like this. This is how I'm gonna do the whole video. Hi, I'm friends with Steph. I have multiple chins and no neck. I'm just organizing my stuff right now. Don't say that in there. I don't know. I was trying to like be funny and it wasn't funny. Skip that, cut that out. Pam is freaking hilarious, is she not? We met through a mutual friend many years ago and I don't even know how we got back like to talking through Facebook. We were talking about probably our dogs and then it progressed into true crime and serial killers and running and then now books. And now we're traveling monthly together to bookstores and she is actually one of my favorite friends to talk with. She is absolutely hysterical. Like she, yeah. I hope she films more hauls for you guys because the world needs more Pam humor. She's hilarious. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel because Pam and I are going to be going to one new bookstore every month and we're having a ton of fun. This is just our second one ever. We have one coming up for March and We'll be doing one every single month and it's so much fun. We're really enjoying it and hope you're enjoying it too. I would also love to be friends with you on TikTok and Instagram at Stuff Lives and Pages and make sure you go like The Crooked Shelf on Facebook and Instagram. You can find them at The Crooked Shelf. Let's support these little independent bookstores because they are so deserving, especially this one. It was truly an amazing store the cutest town. Definitely add it to your bookish bucket list. It is worthy of all the travel, all the visits, and if we are allowed to crash Goose Day, I will see you there. <laughs>